Chris, I've got some English sentences here as well. If I give you a pen, will you mark which ones you think are good English and which ones are bad for any reason? Yes. Just with a tick or a cross. The first one is Mary doesn't think John is tall, she thinks he's a giant. Is that okay? And Goliath wasn't tall, he was a giant. He was not being, he got to himself to be a giant. So that one's no good. All right. Goliath wasn't just tall, he was a giant. That one's all right. Goliath wasn't only tall, he was a giant. Goliath wasn't short, he was a giant. Yes. Yeah, that one's all right. Goliath wasn't short. For Christopher, being a giant entails being tall. So to say that he isn't tall, but he is tall, is a contradiction. So he'll say that sentence is no good. That actually is an interesting problem for us, because it indicates that in some way he does understand what is going on. He knows that giants are tall. He knows that tall people are tall, and they can't simultaneously be non-tall. And so that affects his understanding or interpretation of the sentence. How big is his understanding of grammar? Uh, one has to answer that in two different ways. His understanding of grammar in the sense of being a native speaker is, for English, flawless, and in many of his languages, very good. Understanding grammar in the sense of a linguist, like can he tell me what a subject or an object or accusative is, he's quite good, but he's not, poor, he's not perfect. As a speaker of the language, he's perfect. So if I give him difficult sentences, he always gives appropriate responses about their grammaticality. But if you ask him to describe that, then he doesn't have the vocabulary to do it. How do you explain this? Well, we think that in Christopher's case, the central system is in some way damaged, but his language system is absolutely flawless. He has a perfect language system. Another area in which that same central system disability becomes strikingly apparent is if you play hide and seek games with him. I'm going to hide them. Yes. And I'm going to hide them under here. Okay? Yes. So the keys are hidden and you both saw them. Would you go out of the room now, please, Nikki? <coughs> now he can't see us. Yes. I'm going to take these keys. Yes. And I'm going to hide them under the book. There. Yes. Okay. Where were they before? Do you remember? There. Right. Where do you think Nicky will look for them when he comes in? Why will he look there? Because he put them there. That's right, because I put them there. So, should we let Nicky come back in? Yes. Let's see. Have you come back, Nicky? Yes. yes. Thanks. Do you remember I hid the keys? Oh, yes. Do you remember where I hid them? They were under the folder. That's right. And where are they now? Um, they've gone, haven't they? They've gone, yes. Yeah. Chris, can you tell him where they are? Yeah. Oh, I see where they are, yes. They're in the little book. That's right. They're in the little book. Autistic people, very young children, and Christopher all say where it actually is. They can't bring themselves to believe that somebody else has got a view of reality different from their own. They don't understand that other people have minds distinct from theirs.